excited to introduce ZK Attest to you guys. It's a project to prove all Ethereum on-chain data to Ethereum. So let me tell you what that means. You might think that on-chain data is already available to Ethereum. But if you look more closely at the structure of on-chain data on Etherscan, you'll see that some types of data, like the account balance, uh, the nonce, and the current contract states highlighted here, is available for smart, car smart contracts to use in other applications. On the other hand, if you look down a little bit in Etherscan, you'll see the transaction history. So that's data that is available to every Ethereum archive node, but it's not something that you can touch from another smart contract. Um, but if you look at other applications that serve information from the blockchain off-chain, like OpenSea here, you'll see that having this transaction history, as well as the historic state, for example, a historical owner of a CryptoPunk is pretty important for creating the overall product experience. So the goal of ZK Tester is to give smart contracts trustless access to this much richer set of on-chain data. So let me give you a few examples of what you can do with this type of data. Um, the first class of applications is for ZK-based identity. For example, you might want to make the claim that you own a CryptoPunk but you don't maybe want to reveal the address you hold it in and which CryptoPunk you actually own. Another example for a ZK-based social media app is exactly as Barry was mentioning, you might want to lend more credence to some statement you made by saying that you posted it from an address that holds at least 1,000 ETH. It's a pretty strong form of civil protection. Um, the second class of applications actually removes the ZK aspect. Um, and this could be useful for on-chain reputation. For example, if you're trying to establish that you are a credit-worthy address, well, you might say that you took out a bunch of loans on Aave uh, for a large notional amount, and therefore, a new lending protocol should give you better interest rates. On the more negative side, you might want to um, say that, hey, this miner is being malicious. They mined a sandwich attack in the last block or maybe 10 times in the last two weeks. And therefore, they should suffer some negative consequence in your decentralized application. And a final class of applications um, is, again, without the ZK aspect, uh, for history-aware updates of protocols. Um, if you look at Uniswap TWAP right now, the way it works to compute TWAP between time A and time B is that you checkpoint some values within Uniswap at time A, and then at time B, you're able to compute the TWAP by doing some post hoc computations. Using ZK Tester, you can compute this atomically without the checkpoint. For a final example, if you're running a lending protocol like Compound, right now you can only use the current state of Compound to adjust the protocol parameters, like interest rates. Um, with ZK Tester, you might be able to use historic information like the lowest collateralization ratio achieved in the last week. Okay, with that, let me tell you about how ZK Tester works mechanically. So the idea is that it creates ZK snark proofs for arbitrary state and transaction data from any historical block of Ethereum. So the way that works is you start with a statement about a state or transaction. You call your favorite geth node, maybe your own, maybe Infura's, to get a light client proof of that state or transaction. Then you feed it to ZK Attester, which will give you back a ZK snark proof, which can then be verified on chain against a cached block hash in a smart contract. So through this procedure, ZK Attester is able to prove any data that's available to an Ethereum archive node on chain. So let me walk you through an example of that for the specific statement that I own a CryptoPunk. So we're gonna go through several layers of this statement. At the solidity level, what it means to own a CryptoPunk is in the CryptoPunk's smart contract. There's a mapping, punk index to address, which stores for each CryptoPunk the address which owns it. So the level one answer of what it means to own a CryptoPunk is just that your address is in this mapping. Well, let's go a little bit deeper how does Solidity actually work? So all information in smart contracts in Ethereum is stored in what's called account storage. It's a single mapping between UINT256 
and uint 256, that Solidity packs the state variables in according to some fairly complicated rules, which you can read the documentation for. And if you go dig into documentation, you'll find that the statement that you own a CryptoConk corresponds to the value in a certain slot determined by the Keka cache of the index of the CryptoPunk concatenated with 10, 10 is the location of this mapping in Solidity, happens to contain your address. So at the level of the EVM, that's what it means to own a CryptoPunk. Now let's go one layer deeper um, to understand what it would mean to prove this statement. And for that, we're gonna have to dig into the data structures underlying uh, account and state storage in Ethereum. So Ethereum commits to all data on chain in what's called a Merkle Patricia try. That's a degree 16 try that uses the KAKAK 256 hash for Merkleization. And to give a proof uh, of Merkle inclusion in this try, one has to give an inclusion proof, which is a path from leaf nodes to the root node, showing compatibility with the KAKAK hash along each node. Um, and also using this RLP serialization of the nodes. And if you look at the diagram on the right, there's some complicated but deterministic spec for how this all works. So to give a little bit more detail, there are four key Merkle Patricia tries in Ethereum. Um, there's the state try, which is a mapping between the Keka cache of your address and an RLP encoding of the relevant uh, data about your account. For example, the balance, the nonce, and most importantly, the storage try, which is your local account storage. That stores a um, key value mapping between the KKK hash of a slot and the data at that slot. And finally, within each block, we have Merkle Patricia tries of the transactions and the receipts of those transactions, which are just mappings between the index and the serialization of the transaction or receipt. So all of these uh, Merkle Patricia try roots are committed to within the block hash in the block header. Okay, so from this perspective, what does owning a CryptoPunk mean? It means that there is a block with a known block hash whose block header contains a specific state root. Um, and within that state root, I can do a Merkle Patricia try proof of inclusion to show that for the address of the CryptoPunks contra smart contract, I have some storage root. And within that storage root, I can do a Merkle Patricia try inclusion proof that a specific key value mapping corresponding to the compiled Solidity code has my address as the owner of some CryptoPunk. So that's kind of a mouthful, but when we compile the statement that I own a CryptoPunk all the way down, this ends up being what we're gonna prove. And this is exactly the statement that ZK Attester proves when making the claim that I own some CryptoPunk. Okay, so now let's try to do this live. So I'm gonna show you a demo of this happening. And I hope this works. Okay, so I'm on AWS with my machine. And so first, I am going to run a command which generates uh, inputs to the ZK snark proof for punk slot one. So you can see some data has appeared. Now I'm going to run the witness generation and it's gonna take a little bit. So this is gonna generate the witness that goes into the ZK snark. Um, okay, it should appear in about 10 seconds. Uh, great, okay, so now I've generated the witness and now let me give you a stack trace of how that all worked. Um, so you can see I have an external circuit which does the Ethereum address storage proof. It calls the check for the Ethereum block hash, um, the proof in the account try, and finally a proof in the storage try. So I've generated the witness and now I'm going to do the proof. This will take a little bit longer. So this is now calling the uh, snark prover, which took in the original circuit as well as the witness that I just generated, and it's going to output a constant size um, snark proof. And let me just queue up the verification command. This, is, this takes about 30 seconds, so in perhaps 10 seconds it will complete. 
Great, so I've generated the snark proof, and now let's verify the proof. Um, and what do you know? Snark Genius says the proof verifies. So if you trust that I actually ran some commands, we verified the proof. Okay, so what did this prove? This proved that for this specific block number, this address, which is not my address, owns CryptoPunk number one. Okay, so just to wrap up, ZK Tester right now can do address and storage proofs as well as transaction proofs and the hash of the block header proof. So as you can see, they're both around uh, teens in the uh, like 13 to 16 million constraints in R1CS. The proving keys are pretty big, but as you just saw live, the witness generation and proof times are not so bad. Uh, there are some technical limitations. I can only prove transaction sizes up to 7.5 kilobytes out of a maximum possible of 30 kilobytes, but I hope to remove those soon. Okay, so the short-term roadmap for ZK Tester is I'm looking to optimize and productionize the circuits and then deploy the smart contract on-chain that I mentioned that will cache block hashes and make this whole system fully trustless. Uh, but most importantly, I'd like to integrate with downstream applications uh, that want to make some of the claims that I mentioned earlier in the talk. Um, I've been coming up with various ideas for how to use this, but I'm sure that you guys have much better ideas. Uh, so I'd love to hear if you have anything that could use a tool like this. Uh, you can get in contact with me on Twitter, and I just released the code on GitHub at this address. Uh, so thanks, and I'll take any questions. Uh, is there a mic to? Yeah, so, um, yeah, these are, like, uh, I can see the applications for, like, proving something from Web3 out in a Web2 application, but um, maybe I missed what was required to then have that on-chain. Is that what the, the point to it? Yeah, so the question is, uh, it, it's clear how to use this to prove in a Web2 application, but how does it work on-chain? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So I didn't talk too much about the uh, smart contract with caches, block caches. So the point is that the EVM has access to the last 256 uh, block hashes uh, natively, um, but not more than that. Um, this is, there's some EIP to change this, but for now what we can do is simply have a smart contract which you have to poke every hour or so to just, prop, just like cache these uh, block hashes. So you can do it in a smart way, you can cache sort of Merkleizations of them to not take up too much storage. In the back? Sorry, can you repeat your question? How do you handle the depth of the tree? Ah, I see. Um, yeah, so one thing I didn't mention is that in my proof, I just take trees of bounded but uh, variable size. So for account and storage proofs, I can handle depth up to eight. And then for the transaction try, because the keys are just RLP encodings of the index, um, you can actually show it's deterministically below, I believe, depth seven. Yeah, the question is, um, what's being done before the ZK proof and what's being done um, after it, uh, particularly the usage of the geth node? So the, way, the reason the geth node comes in is just to get the actual light client proof, namely the proof of Merkle Patricia try inclusion. Uh, so there's an API in the ETH uh, RPC called get proof, and a lot of the available services will just give this to you. Uh, uh, Barry? Ah, the question is, what's the developer experience of making something like the Uniswap TWAP computation? Do I have to make circuits? Um, the answer is that you don't have to write any circuits. Um, the block hash caching smart contract will accept a proof and then basically contain a list of true statements, statements of the form, the value in slot XYZ uh, at address ABC is whatever it is. The developer will have to interpret that very raw, low-level uh, EVM level 
uh, information um, downstream in their application. And I think it would be really helpful to develop more tools to make that easier and connect it to the Solidity level. Right now, you have to basically compile Solidity yourself. Yeah. Uh, oh, more time, great. Uh, Yeah, the, the question is, uh, what's the trade-off between the on-chain snark verification versus the direct uh, light client proof, put light client proof on-chain? Um, the light client proofs are pretty huge, so I think it's pretty prohibitive to put them on-chain. For the on-chain snark verification, it's order one cost. I believe it's, or it's constant cost. I believe it's around 600,000 gas per operation. So if, right now, this would only make sense for fairly high value applications. Yeah, the question is, have I heard of Fossil, which is doing this on Cairo? I, I have not. Would love to take a look. Uh, the question is, um, how can I actually make the CryptoPunk claim because I'm revealing which addresses I'm accessing? Um, in the future, would you like to expand this to kind of? Yeah, the answer is um, we, we have uh, circuits for ECDSA. So you would combine this with a proof that you ca I know a signature which verifies for the address in question, but actually not have the address be one of the public inputs. So you can sort of programmatically mix and match what you're hiding. All right, I think we have one minute for any last, half a minute for any last questions. Oh, Barry. Oh, oh sorry, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I see, so I see, I'm wondering with, with I guess I'm wondering with, with uh, Drop 16, obviously you need a trusted setup for this as well, uh, for applications. So I'm curious like, if you also tried this with other uh, proof systems and what kind of performance you might have seen or would expect to see. Yeah, the question is, have I tried this in other proving systems? The answer is no, I would love to. Uh, the main blocker is actually that I don't know of any other proving systems that have on-chain verifiers right now. Um, so I, if you're working on that, I would love to hear about it. All right, thanks, guys.